Welcome to another episode of The Dissection. Today we are talking about why the Apple iPhone is more expensive in South Africa than most other parts of the world. It's super expensive. Apple announced several devices on Monday. They announced a new iPhone 16, a new iPhone 16 Pro. They announced new AirPods. They announced a new Apple Watch, a new Apple Watch Ultra. The phones and the devices are dropping in 58 countries and regions on the 20th of September. Pre-orders begin tomorrow on the 13th of September, Friday the 13th. South Africa is one of the countries that is getting all of the devices on the 20th of September. But this comes at a huge cost. And there is a big debate online about this high cost, this high comparative cost. The conversation in South Africa is about why exactly are these phones so expensive when compared to other international markets and other devices that are sold, which are at the same premium level in South Africa. There's an answer there, and I think it shows an important lesson about various economic models, and we'll discuss that answer a little bit later. But let's check if the the premise is true. Let's check if the premise is true. The premise being, is there a price differential between the other premium devices and the iPhone in South Africa? So let's look at Samsung and look at how the Samsung S24 Ultra is selling in both South Africa and the USA. When it comes to Samsung South African price for the Samsung S24 Ultra 256 gigabytes, it is selling for 23,000 rands, 801. In the USA, that would be $1,329. The S24 Ultra, the same one, is selling in the USA at $1,300 or 23,000 rands, 286. And it can actually be cheaper on discount if you go to a platform like Best Buy, where it's selling for 19,000 rand, 256. So 23,000 is the South African price, 23,800. The American price is 23,286. It's almost one-to-one. It's almost one-to-one. Apple is selling a similar device in terms of specifications, which is the iPhone 15 Pro Max at 256 gigabytes now at 27,299. That's a difference. It's a difference of almost 5,000. That's a lot. Similar spec device, similar premium product, similar brand line. It's not because there's some perception that Samsung is worse than Apple. In fact, most people view them to be in the same range. So the iPhone 15 Pro is selling at a much higher price than the Samsung S24 Ultra. What is the price of the iPhone 15 Pro in the USA compared to the South African price? In the USA, the 15 Pro Max, when it was released, was $1,199. The same one, the 256 gigabytes, which is 21,474 rands. Now, that's still a difference. It's a significant difference. 27,299 versus 21,474. That's a big difference. That's 6,000 rands difference. Now, when the new iPhone that is being dropped, the Apple 16, it's coming in at 999 US dollars, which is 17,800. The projections are that this device is going to sell for upwards of 32,000 rands in South Africa based on previous um, selling prices. 32,000 rands versus 17,800. That's a difference of 78%. Because if you convert the, the price to US dollars, the phone is going to sell for $9.99 in the US, but if an American was buying it in South Africa, they would be paying, let's say they were just buying it on the, on the online or whatever, they would pay $1,787 for the same phone. 
almost double. That's crazy. That's crazy. So it's very clear that South Africa is one of the most expensive markets. When you look at the iPhone price, I'm just going to do the RAND costs in terms of the comparisons here between the USA, India, Germany, China, and Japan. In the USA, the iPhone is coming in at 17800 like I said. In India, it's coming in at 25575 In Germany, it's coming in at 23659 In China, it's coming in at 20114 In Japan, it's coming at 20114 Some of the things that make these devices more expensive in other countries are, of course, the tax, the excise duty, the logistics to to transport those particular devices from factory to shop. So that explains sometimes why the phone is slightly more expensive in India than it is in, for for instance, uh, China, where it's relatively cheap. The USA is cheapest. And Germany is even cheaper. Europe Europe is going to have relatively the same price. So taxes affect, excise duty affects, which is a a different type of tax because VAT, value-added tax, as you know, in South Africa is a a different type of tax from excise duty, which is charged on certain products. Some Apple products don't actually get excise duty. I think the iPad doesn't get excise duty charged on it, but the iPhone does get an excise duty of 7% charged on it. But even if you factor these costs in, it doesn't explain the high price differential between the Samsung and the Apple device and the Apple device in every other country. It does not. It does not, right? The reality is there is another reason why the iPhone is more expensive in South Africa than it is in other parts of the world. And we're going to discuss that now. But I want to give you some history, right? We do research out here. So you may not have known this, but um, there's a history that Apple computer company has with South Africa. Apple does not view South Africa as, or Africa even, as a priority market, and hence has been working through middlemen in Africa for its Africa sales. The history of Apple in South Africa stretches back to the Apple II computer, which was brought into South Africa by a company which was called Base 2 Limited in 1979. So almost Apple II was like the second computer. Apple I came up earlier in the 70s. So since then, there have been Apple sell- sales in South Africa, 1979. In 1984, the Macintosh uh, computer launched, one of the classic Apple devices, and Base 2 st- actually was selling it in South Africa. 1985, there was a decision made by Apple to cut ties with Base 2 Limited, and they cited political reasons, of course, apartheid. The quote from Apple at the time was, Apple rejects the apartheid policies of the current government, and we are therefore con- discontinuing our activities in South Africa. And this was said by Apple President Michael Sp- Spindler in 1985, in August of 1985. Between 1985 and 1984, there was a gray market basically for uh, Apple products in South Africa, right? And this was fed by an Apple distributor who was located in Khaberon in Botswana. So basically, the products were landing in, in bots and then they were coming into South Africa. In 1992, Apple announced its plans to re enter South Africa. And then the, a company known as Siltec Distribution Dynamics assimilated the o- older company, Base 2 Limited, which was involved in the distribution. In 1993, Sergio Nani, the senior director of Apple Europe, actually led a delegation to South Africa. He met with former President Nelson Mandela. There were discussions. In 1994, Charles Proudfoot was the general manager. Brian Sigelman and other executives set up Apple Computer South Africa. In 1995, the core computer business and venture computer started distributing Apple products in South Africa. In 1996 and 1997, between 1996 and 1997, Venture Computer stopped distributing Apple products in the 90s and started morphing into Lexmark South Africa. In the year 2000, Siltec Distribution Dynamics started distributing Apple products just before Apple Computer South Africa wound down its operation. Now, Although Siltec distribution assimilated the first local distributor 
based too limited. It did not start pro distributing Apple products in the post-democracy South Africa until 2000. By August of 2000, Apple was winding down its operations in South Africa. Brian Sigelman left the company and Apple Computer South Africa handed over most of its functions to the core, core group. In 2001, David White sold the core group to the Ishkovitz Group and Silk Tech shut down its doors. A few months, this happened a few months before the iPod launched in South Africa, right? And its shares were suspended. It delisted uh, from the Johannesburg Stock Exchange in April of 2005. The iPod, remember, when, when Silk Tech was getting out of the business, the I iPod was released uh, in US in 2001. It launched in South Africa during the 2001-2002 holiday season. In 2002, core computer business became an Apple independent marketing company, right? So Apple appoints independent marketing companies, according to them, in marginal territories where the revenue doesn't warrant a full subsidiary office. And this is something that was said by uh, Sigelman at the time. These IMCs are super distributors that are responsible for all aspects of Apple's business and functions as though they are Apple. IMCs were an Apple Europe idea to run the business in places like Eastern Europe, post the collapse of the USSR, communism, and the Berlin Wall. So who is this core group, this IMC, that is now distributing South Africa's, um, and Africa's uh, actually iPhones, or most of Africa, right? The core group is the exclusive distributor of Apple products in South Africa. They have 599 employees. They have a revenue in excess of 10 billion rands a year. They are the sole distributor in South Africa, not only for Apple, but also for Nintendo brands and for DJI, the one which makes those drones, etc. No one else is allowed to import these companies' products through official channels. Some consumers have actually accused the core group of monopoly pricing and behaving like a bully. We'll talk about that more. According to their website, the core group represents some of the world's most valued and loved brands in sub-Saharan Africa. They say that it's our company's mission to empower individuals and organizations with the world's leading personal technology products and services. We are the leading distributor of Apple in sub-Saharan Africa and have represented the brand in South Africa since 1995. We are also the distributors for other major brands such as DJI and Nintendo. Our responsibilities are all-encompassing and include supply chain management, marketing management, channel management, Enterprise sales and media relations. The territory of operations comprises Angola, Botswana, Lesotho, Malawi, Mozambique, Ni Namibia, Nigeria, South Africa, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Basically the whole of SADAC. Effectively, this group, the core group, has a monopoly on Apple products. Now, let's talk economics. A monopoly is something that is generally undesirable in a market. One of the reasons why is because they can abuse that dominance. The criticism of monopoly businesses, one of them, is that they can charge any price they want because customers do not have any other alternatives within that particular product or whatever, right? So let's be clear. It's very difficult for you right now if you wanted to get an iPhone from America the UK or Canada, because you'd have to fly there and the cost of flights is quite prohibitive. But let's say you say, okay, I don't want to fly. I want to actually buy them on Amazon, etc. It's also difficult for you to order them on Amazon because they do not deliver those products to South Africa. You know, when you order on Amazon.com, not necessarily .coza, what they will tell you is that this product does not ship to your country. You would then need to ship that product to an American address and have that American ship that product to you, it would still be cheaper. And some people can do this, but not many people know somebody who lives in America who is willing to do all of this schlepping for them to be able for them to get this device, right? Sometimes people wait for a relative coming from the UK or whatever to give them this device, but that's also not easy. The other side of the equation is that most people get their phones through contracts with cellular providers. So they pay a monthly subscription get that phone, and because there's kind of financing for the phone, obviously those um, sellers like Vodacom, MTN, make a profit on the lending agreement. They are financial service providers, basically. 
So most people don't have the money up front. They buy these because these are expensive devices. They buy them through these distributors. So here's what happens. Because the core group has a monopoly on the distribution, they sell to Vodacom, MTN, Celsi, you name it, at the price of, of their choice, right? So even if you are getting it on a contract, you can't get it cheaper. And obviously you can't get a contract with Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. So it's therefore difficult for people to be able to get access to these devices. And guess what? This even affects the secondhand market. Many Apple devices, which are pre-owned, are relatively affordable. And you can buy them on platforms in America, such as back market. And you'd be surprised how much you can get some of these devices for. It is accessible. It is relatively affordable. But in South Africa, even to resell these products as a company, you have to go through the core group because they have the exclusive rights to the sale and resale of these devices. Obviously, you can sell them on Gantry and Facebook, but that's not for pre-owned and verified devices. But in America, you can buy them from a variety of platforms. Now, here are some questions. First question, is it in the interest of customers to pay these super high exorbitant prices on Apple devices? The answer is no. It's not in customers' interest to pay more than something is worth. There is clearly a big price differential. If you look at S24 is 19,000. And if you get now the iPhone 16, you're going to pay 32,000. That's crazy. That's crazy. I'm talking about the American price. That's crazy. That's too much. 13,000 rand difference. The, the answer is no. This is not in customers' interest. This is not market friendly at all. Is it in the interest of Apple? to have Apple devices prohibitively expensive in Africa? The answer is also no. I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on this. Africa right now is going through what is known as a demographic dividend. What does this mean? It means that Africa is going to blow up in terms of population size even more than it is right now. Estimates are that by 2050, Africa will be the most populated continent on Earth. Right? That's the, just the long and short of it. And also, it will be the youngest population. Compared to other parts of the world, Italy, Japan, etc., these are populations which will be getting older, will not have a lot of young people in them. This affects companies like Apple, which are trying to sell right, devices to young consumers, to consumers, uh, new consumers as much as possible. Because if you don't sell devices, then your business becomes a service business up until a certain point. You can't grow much from a service business. Every company wants to grow to the next level. So this is relevant, right? This, this dividend is relevant. Apple right now uh, has focused heavily on China because China has a large population. They are in the middle of their dividend as things stand. But the Chinese population as well is aging. Their birth rate is slowing down. That will leave Africa. The reason why Apple has also focused and developed market penetration in India is because of the large population in India, right? Even if you think, ah, but Africa will always be poor, that is just dismissive of the realities of Africa as it is right now and also the potential of Africa down the road. Many Africans may not be able to afford the flagship iPhone, Pro, Max, what, 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 right? But many of them actually potentially could afford the iPhone SE. What is preventing the adoption, the further adoption, excuse me, of Apple products in Africa is the exorbitant pricing of these devices, even at the budget end. Even at the budget end, the iPhone SE, which is the budget uh, phone, it sells for 7,697 in the USA, but it sells for 12,000 rands in South Africa. This this phone was deliberately designed by Apple to be the budget option for cost-conscious consumers, for consumers in emerging markets such as India, such as Africa. But it has been overpriced in South Africa, preventing the company from achieving its strategic objective of giving options to people who want to enter the Apple 6 ecosystem at a lower price. This then leads to some questions. Is it not time for Apple to start selling phones and other de devices to South Africa and the rest of Africa directly. The continent currently has 1.4 billion. 
and they can get a market penetration of up, of up to 5% of the population as it is right now. And in future, they can get even a bigger cut of that uh, market because there is a demographic dividend under the way, underway right now. Part of the reason they're not seeing these gains right now is because of the effect of this distribution monopoly of their product in the SADC region. I want to be fair to the core group. They've taken the risk, right? They took the risk before the iPod came out. They've been able to give the Apple experience to South Africa. They have lobbied for devices to be on the same schedule in South Africa as other nations. They've gotten services to be quickly added as well, such as, um, you know, Apple Arcade, et cetera, et cetera. They took the risk when the market was not clear. In the, in the early 90s, 1995, Apple computer was going through a disastrous period. This is before Steve Jobs came back and turned things around um, and really redirected things, right? This is before the, the other Mac, Macintosh came on. What was that? Yeah, the colorful one before the iPod, before all of these things happened. So the iPhone happens in 2007. They've already taken the risk for a long period of time. So they've done that. They've provided an experience. You go to those uh, iStores. It feels like you're in an Apple store. You know, sometimes if you're lucky, you get to go to other parts of the world. You go to an Apple store, maybe in New York. You go to an Apple store in LA. You get a similar experience to what you would get at the Apple store in, um, in Santon to a degree. It's not obviously the same, same, but there's a, there's a degree of similarity. They took that risk. But the pricing, the cost to any Apple customer in Africa is quite prohibitive. It does feel at some points like, yeah, no, this is price gouging of another level. To Apple, I have this to say. Spotify ignored Africa for a very long time. And then they rushed when they wanted to do an IPO because they realized that there's a large market base in Africa. They'd undervalued Africa, African music for a very long time. It was a mistake that they made, in my opinion. Musicians often skip over Africa when they do world tours. They act as if Africa is not part of the world, right? They will say, ah, world tour. Then they'll mention, you know, uh, Sydney. They'll mention Hong Kong. They'll mention all areas, you know, in the world, but they will just act as if there's no Africa. This is very disrespectful. It assumes that there's nobody who can fill up a stadium for these people, even though we've shown multiple times that we have customers, we deserve that respect, that acknowledgement. And oftentimes, the ignoring of Africa is simply due to biases, stereotypes, and really disrespect to African bodies and African markets. I don't think Apple should make that mistake for another two decades. What I want to say to Apple is, I think it's time for you to invest in Africa and to take African consumers seriously. There's so much, there's only so much market share that you can still get in the EU, in China, and in North America. The real game, I think, remains in Africa. And I also want to say something even more provocative to Apple. The lithium and the cobalt in your phones comes from Africa. Even if you are now using more recycled cobalt and lithium, right? they say that they're using up to 90% recycled now, that does not change the fact that even that recycled cobalt and lithium came from Africa. It came from Africa. It came from Africa at a very high cost. And it still comes from Africa, that other 10% and maybe even more for different devices, at a very high cost. Because sometimes if... If other companies are not recycling their cobalt and lithium, right? Let's say it's Samsung, it's Huawei, all of these other ones uh, that are still selling devices, right? When you guys buy the recycled lithium, it's coming from companies that took it unrecycled from Africa anyway, because that's where most of the cobalt is coming from, from the DRC, right? It's coming at a very high cost because African children are dying. Africa is at war. Congo is at war right now in parts of it so that people can give you this lithium and give you this cobalt at a very cheap price. Very cheap price that Apple is getting the lithium and cobalt. There's something deeply immoral, Apple, about the iPhone being more expensive in Africa than most other parts of the world. 
when the raw materials that are in that iPhone come from Africa and people in Africa are dying for the world to have these iPhones. I think it's time for you to relook your whole Africa strategy. I think it's time for you to relook the pricing of your devices in Africa. I don't know, guys. What do you think? Let's have a conversation. Till the next one.